धर्म शान या जान का उदान आज एक धनुष के बाण पे उदार दो आरंभ है प्रचंड बोल मस्तकों के झुंड आज जंग की घड़ी के तुम गुहार दो भगवान शान या की जान Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, and we are working on our third lesson of the chapter, which is on Buddhism, our second major world religion we're talking about in this chapter, and the second of five that we're going to talk about this year. Now, in the last lesson, we were talking about Hinduism, uh, the religion that 80% of India worships. And it's interesting that another major religion formed in India actually kind of based on Hinduism, but you don't really see it a lot in India, but rather it's a major world religion for a lot of East Asia, Southeast Asia, Laos, Vietnam, uh, uh, Thailand, Cambodia, China, North and South Korea, and Japan, and Mongolia, and that is Buddhism. And even though it isn't really in its Indian roots anymore, uh, it did come from India in ancient Indian times, so it's important that we talk about it when we talk about Indian history. Now, like I said, a major new religion developed in India from questions posed by a young prince named Siddhartha Gautama. And Gautama was essentially, he was born to a wealthy family, and he came about in around... It, uh, around five, uh, 500 years, 2,500 years ago. And he was born to a wealthy family, but he one of the things was he wondered about the pain and suffering around him. Now, stories talk about how uh, Gautama was raised but being hidden by and by his father who was going to make him the ruler of the kingdom into... Uh, he was going to make him the ruler, so he wanted to hide Gautama from all the suffering in the world. And then when he finally goes out and sees the suffering, it changes his heart. And at around age 30, he decided to go off and look for truth. And he wanted to wonder why there was, he was wondering why there was suffering. And so what he tried to do is he wandered through forests and he tried to free himself from daily concerns through fasting. Fasting was going without food, where instead of taking care of your body and your body's concerns, that you fast and you concern yourself with religious concerns. And this religious concern that Gautama mainly dealt with was meditating or focusing the mind on spiritual ideas. And here's a picture of Gautama. Uh, which he was known as the Buddha, which we'll talk about more in a minute. But Gautama, at one point, he started gathering some followers, talking with his, talking with his uh, ideas about suffering and stuff. And he tried to rid himself of so much pleasure. Here's a picture of him, a painting of him, that he survived, according to Buddhist history and Buddhist doctrine, on one grain of rice per day. And so he would sit there and he would eat that one grain of rice just to sustain him and keep him alive. And the rest of the time he would spend medit. So he would do that in order to gain understanding and find an explanation for suffering. So what he did is he came up with an explanation for what causes human suffering. And he says this, and it kind of sounds a little confusing at first, but it makes sense when you look at it this way. He says it's caused by many things. One, it's caused by wanting what one doesn't have. In other words, you have you want something, you don't have it, so you're going to desire for it and you're going to strive to get it. You want to hang on to what you have despite everything. So like you have your favorite thing and you just want to hang on to it, your favorite car or your favorite video game. You want to hang on to it forever and not let it go no matter what. Uh, and not wanting what one dislikes but still has. In other words, you have something that you dislike, something you don't like, like Brussels sprouts, but you still hang on to it. And he says that these things cause human suffering, that uh, people desiring and trying to get what they ha do not have, uh, hanging on to things that they have for way too long, or hanging on to stuff that they don't want and it just bothers them. Gautama became popular as well as his teachings, and he soon became known as the term the Buddha. And the Buddha just means the enlightened one and he was considered an enlightened one in Hindu uh, religion uh, he was considered a good teacher in fact he was uh, born to a Kshatriya family and but what ended up happening was Siddhartha's teachings ended up, and his followers teaching him splitting further and further from Hinduism that became its own religion and the religion based on the teachings of Buddha is known as Buddhism 
So let's go ahead and let's talk about the teachings of Buddhism. Uh, and this is a big long group of texts. A lot of it is kind of important, but we'll work through it. Okay, and like I said, the teachings of the Buddha is known as Buddhism. Okay, so just to make sure, uh, Gautama's name isn't Buddha. Okay, Buddha is just a term meaning enlightened one. And so the teachings of the enlightened one is the Buddhism. Now, Buddhism is based on two main ideas, uh, two main statements. One is the Four Noble Truths. And the Four Noble Truths are right here. Number one, suffering and unhappiness are a normal part of life. In other words, no matter what you do, what you deal with, you're going to have to deal with suffering and unhappiness. The second one goes back to those three things that was stated earlier. Suffering stems for our desire for pleasure and material goods. So in other words, all the stuff we want, all the stuff we try to get, and all the pleasure that we go through ends up leading to suffering either for you or for someone else because it's considered selfishness. Now, people can overcome their desires and reach the Buddhist idea of nirvana. Nirvana is a state of perfect peace or nothingness. There's no suffering, but at the same time, there's no happiness, no sadness. It's just being. And you're free of all desires, and you're free of all suffering, and all does that. And people can follow an eightfold path to nirvana, overcoming, and in the, overcoming their desires to get stuff, and ignorance of not knowing what causes suffering. And so what ends up happening is Buddhists tend to lead more of a selfless lifestyle. You end up having monks uh, who, like the Lord Buddha, fast and meditate and things like that rather than try to accumulate material goods. Now the Eightfold Path is as follows, and I have them written down right here. One is the right view of reality. In other words, you view reality as unhappiness and suffering because of pleasures and desires. Uh, the right thoughts. In other words, what you do is you try to think the good things about freedom, uh, not trying to cause suffering and things like that. The right speech, speaking in truthful and non-hurtful ways. Uh, the right actions. The right actions are in non-harmful ways that you don't want to cause suffering. Uh, the right livelihood or the right job. You work in a job that doesn't cause suffering. Uh, the right effort. You always make an effort to improve your life and to reduce unhappiness and suffering in others. The right mindfulness. Uh, in other words, you're aware of what reality is. So you don't just know what reality is, you're aware of it and it affects your actions. And finally, the right concentration, the right meditation that you go into in order to get rid of these uh, get rid of these desires that keep you from nirvana. Now the Eightfold Path is seen in the traditional Buddhist symbol of the Dharma wheel and this is an older Dharma wheel and each of these spokes in the wheel are each of the points in the Eightfold Path. So we have Four Noble Truths and an Eightfold Path and these are the two main ideas of Buddhism. Now these ideas are similar to some Hindu concepts, uh, depending on some types of worship, and I know we didn't really go into a lot of it, but some go against traditional ideas. One of the things was the Buddhism quest the Buddha and Buddhism by extension questioned the need for animal sacrifice, because in many Hindu sects there are uh, in many Hindu religious groups there's an idea that you need to do sacrifice of not just food but also animals in order to please the gods, and one of the things that Hinduism and Buddhism really differ on is the value of a person. Whereas Hindus have the caste system and you're born that because of your karma and stuff, Buddhists believe that everyone is equal because everyone is striving to achieve nirvana. And it questioned the authority of the Brahmin because the Brahmins were set up at the top of the caste system and they were the religious leaders and they were the only people who could help you get to uh, get to the Brahmin uh, into that reincarnation into higher caste and it also opposed the caste system because they believed that everyone was equal and this caused problems with the Indian authorities and over the years it helped ended up getting pushed out of Buddhism getting pushed out of India through things like that and one of the major things of Buddhism like I said is that it could, one could reach Nirvana on their own without anyone's assistance okay and so these ideas of of self-discipline and things like that prove very popular and with a king that we'll talk about in the next lesson Ahsoka uh, who became a Buddhist he was an Indian king Buddhist missionaries took uh, sent out the good news of Buddhism and the ability to work on your own 
to get rid of suffering and ignorance and reach nirvana, uh, they took hold in neighboring countries around India, such as Nepal, which is by Mount Everest, north of India, Sri Lanka, it's that little teardrop island south of India, as well as later on in China, Japan, and Korea. And that's where we see it, and we ha see individual flavors of Buddhism in these places, where, for example, in Nepal, you see you see temples like this, uh, and you have different flavors of Buddhism with it, whereas a temple in Japan with Zen Buddhism, which is a little bit different, different straight on teachings, look like this. They're both very different from traditional, from what you would see in these other countries, but they still hold the same general beliefs. And Buddhism has become a major world religion in recent times. Uh, people, especially in the West, who've picked up on Buddhism in the past 50 years, like the concept of self-discipline and things like that. And also the fact that Buddhism doesn't have a god per se. Buddha isn't worshipped. He's just considered a good teacher. And that there is no god, and there is no heaven, there is no hell, there's just nirvana. It's a state of nothingness that we strive for without any sort of suffering or anything like that. And one of the major world leaders is a Buddhist. You might have heard of him. It's the Dalai Lama. And he's a leader of uh, a region of China known as Tibet, and he's an exile. He lives away from there. And he's a very famous speaker, and he talks about peace, harmony, working together, discipline, things like that, traditional teachings of Buddhism. And here he is in a picture speaking with President Barack Obama. So he's considered to be very famous and very influential. So to sum up things, let's look at the teachings of Buddhism. Remember, Buddhism was founded by this guy, Siddhartha Gautama. He was an Indian prince who didn't understand why there was suffering, and he understood that everything in life is suffering. And if you do four things, uh, if you realize the four noble truths, that suffering and unhappiness are normal parts of life, and it stems for our desire for pleasure and material goods, and that you can overcome them and reach this state of nothingness called nirvana, it's the perfect peace. And you do this through an eightfold path of overcoming desire and ignorance, through realizing what reality is, thinking right, saying right things, doing right things, having the right job that doesn't hurt or cause suffering, uh, trying to improve your life, thinking right, not trying to cause suffering, and getting rid of pleasure and things like that, and also doing meditation can help you achieve that state of nirvana. So. That's our lesson. We have one more. We talked about two religions, Hinduism and Buddhism. In the last one, we'll talk about some Indian kingdoms in history, including King Asoka, who spread Buddhism out of India into areas of Asia where it is the major religions today. So, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching.